All right guys, so we're out here on a vaulted out drive call. And this particular drive happens to operate one of the chamber doors and it's flashing a 50. And no, that is not for 50 cent the wrapper. That is for 50 hertz, the European standard for frequency. The problem is it's operating a 60 hertz motor. And when we go to push the reset tab, it just gives me error. So that's already not a good sign. So the absolute first step that I'm going to want to do is take an input voltage reading. And the reading is 241 volts, which is perfect since this is a 240 volt input drive. So now that we checked our inputs, now it's time to check the output. In order to check the output voltage to the motor, I'm going to force the door to close. And there we are, in the closed position, reset the alarm, and take a voltage reading on my output terminals, and we are at zero volts outputting. So I can clearly tell that this motor is not receiving an output signal in order to close that door. So in preparation to change this drive, I always like to have the machine schematic and the drive schematic ready, along with a highlighter. According to the schematic, the drive is the only thing standing in the way from the power signal getting to that motor to close the door. So now that I know what's standing in the way from getting that power to that motor, I want to pay very close attention to all my control terminals and what they do and how they operate and what's required to get this drive to operate. That's when I'll print out the page of all the drive's control terminal and then I want to verify that they actually match the control terminals on the actual drive itself. After doing that, I will understand each numbered terminal and its operation and what it does. And another part of the secret sauce that a lot of people won't know is these little hidden control switches that actually control very important functions of the drive. And this little control switch happens to analog signal of 0 to 10 volts, 0 to 20 milliamps, or 4 to 20 milliamps. So you would definitely need to know that that switch is there if you were running off an analog signal. Since we are running off a digital signal from a PLC, I could go ahead and close this little chamber back. The next step would be to go ahead and print out the parameter list so that you can know all the parameters that these drives hold. Now there may be multiple menus to the parameter list, so be careful and make sure that you understand that it's either one menu or seven menus depending on the drive. Some drives actually hold hundreds of parameters. Luckily for us, this drive only holds 30. And it's also very important to understand the push button flow chart. Because if you happen to push the wrong button when you have an open menu, you can erase very important parameters that you need. The next step is to open the parameter menu of your old drive and start recording all the values 1 through 30 or however many your drive carries. You're going to need the data from those parameter values in order to input it into your new drive. Another helpful tool to have printed out is the troubleshooting flowchart. This drive happens to have multiple troubleshooting flowcharts which actually make it easy to understand what the drive is doing. With a lot of patience and a little bit of know-how, anybody could change out one of these drives. Definitely after watching a couple YouTube videos and having all the literature at your disposal, you can definitely change out one of these drives no problem. So I'm going to go ahead and extract these parameters and get this drive changed. So until the next one, I will see you guys. Stay safe out there.